Hi Tariq, um, thank you for speaking to me today. Um, well, could you tell me a bit about what asset classes you think will be big in the MENA region going forward? Sure. Uh, fixed income is at a very early stage still mm -hmm. in the Middle East and there needs to be substantial development in the fixed income uh, asset class in, in the MENA. It's uh, quite behind actually. Um, real estate uh, have been hit and um, and a lot of the global investors have yeah. uh, you know are licking their wounds from uh, the uh, losses that they've had in the real of estate uh, sector um, so that keeps us with private equity and public equity um, private equity is a sector that w could continue to uh, yeah. see uh, growth opportunities However, in the MENA region, there is a lot of uh, liquidity within the private sector, and so the need for private money is not as high as a lot of the other emerging markets. Uh, plus, control is an issue for a lot of the family businesses, and, yeah. and therefore, typically private equity firms, it's not easy to come uh, to, to kind of find the deal flow yeah. uh, in, in this regard. Plus. If, you, if they do find the deal flow, it's very much mm. more difficult to be able to have a controlling stake. Of course. Um, so that's in terms of private equity. In terms of public equity, the public equity market have not have had a period of time where yes. global investors had a significant interest in it, but that was just before the mm. crisis of 2008, and since then there was no interest at all in the region. Okay. Um, what you know, what, what's likely to happen going forward is that the interest from the global investors would likely increase in the region, starting from almost yeah. nothing, frankly. Yeah. Um, and that would, an important catalyst for this would be the opening up of the Saudi market to international okay. investors, because that's the biggest market sure. in the region. Um, and as the Saudi market opens to global investors, mm. it would put the whole region, not only yeah. Saudi, on the radar screen of, of, course. of global investors. That's interesting. And can you tell me what can the fund management industry do to help um, become really successful in this region as well? Sure. I mean, it's, it's important to have the governance standards of the international uh, asset mm. managers to attract the institutional global investors, because this is where substantial amounts of uh, money is. Okay. And, and this is the type of money that you would want to attract to this region. And you need, someone needs to be very careful of attracting the mm. hot money. Uh, which is some of the hedge funds and, and so on. So it's important to have the standards that would attract the institutional long-term okay. investors yes. uh, such as the US and some of the European uh, investors. Um, and it's, you know, for a lot of those investors, it's important to have independent asset managers where the managers right. actually put their own money behind uh, in their own uh, funds similar to the model that is uh, applied elsewhere around the world and yes. that's typically the model that's most preferred to the you know the endowments of the world the top tier endowments of the of, of the course. world and the institution Tarek also we've there's been a lot of upheaval in the middle east um, sure. so investors are naturally nervous what impact has this had on your business if any well it definitely had a short-term mm. impact that's been quite negative, I must say. Um, ironically, since the crisis of 2008 up mm. till the end of last year and early, very early this year, there was no interest at all from global institutional investors, yes. which are our main target clients. Uh, but at that time, early this year and late mm. last year, we've all of a sudden seen a significant turnaround of that interest okay, and of substantial yeah. amounts uh, of you know 50 to 100 million dollar ticket sizes and in some cases mm. as high as 400 million dollar to be allocated in 2011 and then the um, the uh, Arab uh, Spring started and mm. a big part of those have actually put their plans to allocate to MENA and the back burner Mm. Um, and then few others continued to want to be uh, to allocate, and then the global uh, issues came in, in terms of the crisis in Europe and the U.S., and which made the remaining who yep. were still looking to allocate actually think that they need mm. to be thinking of their big yeah. part of the portfolio before they consider MENA and that. So 
unfortunately it resulted in, in course, yeah. no inflows coming to the region in fact there's been outflows from the region okay but you're optimistic about the future going forward I'm I hope I'm so. very optimistic I think you know it may be another year to two years right. maybe three years of difficult times it's difficult to say it depends on what happens in the global uh, picture but definitely this is a virgin market mm -hmm. A, a manager that has the standards of the, the best of breeds on a global basis will be yeah. very well positioned to take full advantage of the opportunity as and when the global sure. money yep. comes through. And, and if you think about it, there's been a number of players in the market mm. who could not survive this long, difficult period. And you've seen, you know, funds like Credit Suisse, MENA Fund closing down and, yep. and others merging with the MENA Fund with, with the frontier funds like BlackRock yep. and a number of others that have really wind down. Uh, so for those who will survive this period and have the right processes in place uh, mm. and the right systems and, and strategy, uh, they should benefit substantially in the future. Great. Thank you so much for your time, Tarek. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.